Well, hello, superstars, and welcome to a new episode of the Just Vet It podcast. Today's episode, we're doing things a little bit, di- okay a lot of it differently, all right? Instead of listening to me speak on a topic, I got inspired by the Holy Spirit to, you know, do a little (laughs) razzle-dazzle and do things differently. So I reached out to some of my spiritual warriors and I asked them to share their own personal testimonies with you all. This episode is all about the power of music, movies, and social media. Learning to protect your eyes and ears and the significance or the importance of it. I asked my guests the following three questions, and collectively, we created this podcast episode. I asked them, how has protecting your ears and eyes affected your well-being? How did you get to that point? And what do you fill yourself with now? We're all saying the same thing, just in a different way. I don't know which way you need to hear it to affect you, but I'm hoping that through somebody you are affected and impacted. And if you hear nothing else, just know that you are not alone. We are all battling together. So without further ado, let's start the show. I think it's always good to start with, you know, what is the function of our eyes and our ears? So they're part of our five senses, right? What are the senses for? Well, God gave it to us with the purpose of gathering information that can, you know, protect us or enhance our lives. When we hear things spoken over us, they're life or death. When we say things, they're life or death. And our eyes are the portal to our heart. And if we continue to view things and consume things, we're going to start to walk out in that character. Because some, for me personally, sometimes it'll change the way I feel. So if, so if it's a hood trigger trigger song, I'm going to feel hood trigger. If it's a Christian song, I'm going to feel like that. If it's like a sad song, I'm going to feel like that. So it's really being in tune with what you are listening to, what you are watching, because it can change you. You might not see it right away, but it can change you and change your moods. And we have to pay attention to that and be so careful. I think when I was younger, you know, I didn't really understand like, you know, um, that certain things when you listen to them they kind of start to do something to you even if you feel like you're not fully affected but it changes your mind it changes how you feel i didn't used to be as cautious about it but when i realized that specific things would shift my mood my mindset or my productivity it changed things for me for example if you're going through a heartbreak and you're listening to an artist who you know sings very depressed songs i feel like it just leads you into like a deeper depression or a deeper sadness you know i I don't want to say it's necessarily the worst um song in the world but it does play a part in altering um how you feel i struggle with like secular music because i'm like you know it sounds good to the ear i learned a long time ago he was the 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 angel of music and he was so beautiful and then he just became ugly inside and out there's music that your body but it's still not talking it's not praising god it's not doing anything for our minds for our bodies for our souls it's just a distraction it's either talking about sex or a broken heart or whatever just things that are not really fueling our system in any kind of way you still got to filter them because you know you got to listen to the lyrics not just the tune for so many years, I've just allowed all types of negative stuff into my space, and it's created just a negative energy around me, and I haven't benefited from it at all. Because what I didn't realize is that being on social media, which is a part of our culture, has made me at one point so insecure, but it's subconsciously. I did not realize I was insecure about it because I did it so, it was almost normal. It was be, It was almost like programming. I would go online and I would see women who are younger than me or follow IG baddies and you see them living a lifestyle that I personally desire for myself, but almost felt like it was unattainable for me. Basically, they were able to achieve that. So it was like this natural comparison that I would do that I didn't notice I was doing. It just literally, like I said, it came naturally. My eyes and my ears has affected my depression. It has affected my anxiety. It has affected my faith. And basically, it has affected my day-to-day life well i would notice that i would fall into depression quite a lot um i would fall into anxiety 
too often affected me personally. I remember a long time ago, I decided that Instagram was not healthy for me. Unfortunately, I'm human. I started comparing myself to the Instagram baddies. I started comparing myself to my classmates who are thriving in school. And I started comparing myself to my classmates who are my age and still traveling. I know it's it's very easy for you to say, well, just don't compare yourself. Well, when you see all these things and you see all these concerts and you see all these new releases, new clothes, new this, as a hu- it's a natural human instinct to want to participate. Because I, I typically am the type of person where it's like I wake up in the morning and I just have a song in mind. And believe it or not, music does affect you. And no one can tell my mind about that. It has some level of influence on you. And um, eyes, so once I stop, you know, looking at, explicit content we all know what we're talking about here um my mind has a little bit more peace i have a little bit more um i have more restraint more self-control because you know i don't want to like not be able to not be in control of my own body my own actions my own movements a lot of things that we watch on either the internet through movies tv shows or types of music we listen to can really desensitize us from those things and just make things seem okay in our lives when it's really not good for our soul. Like for example, if you watch like a movie with a whole bunch of sex scenes and um, a whole bunch of vulgar language or a scary movie with a lot of like possessed um, spirits or anything like that, things like that, or like a lot of killing or murder, Things like that can, when you see it over and over, you become desensitized to it, and then you become it becomes okay when it's really not. We should we shouldn't be okay with murders in front of our face or just you know inappropriate um, promiscuous things in our life. And if we continue to view things and consume things, we're gonna start to walk out in that character. I remember there was a time where I would just watch people hurt people for entertainment. I can't live like that anymore. I can't watch those things and not feel hurt and feel sad. How I got to the point of understanding, you know, that I need to filter things before they get into my life is by number one, being human like everybody else, by not always having made the right decisions. Um, I have to take responsibility for the God, for the life that has been gifted to me. The Bible talks about how we are allowed to do all these things but are they good for us? No, right? The pain of hunger cannot compare to the pain of really being sick because of these, um, you know, eating these, um, these items that were past their expiration or the right time for them to be consumed. So, you know, protecting myself from that, it got to a point where when I started to do it and I would be sad and I used to pray to God like, yo, you know, I'm feeling sad. I don't know why I'm not where I'm supposed to be. And God is just like, look, you're exactly where you are supposed to be. You just feel you just don't feel that way because you're too busy comparing your life to someone else's life. That's the real problem. And it had me shook. So what I did literally, like once I discovered that, I went on my social media and like all the girls that had these like lavish lifestyles, I literally had to unfollow them. And I'm still like as they pop on my newsfeed. If I feel like I'm not inspired by them, I unfollow them. You know what I mean? Because it's like, yes, those things are amazing. They're great. And it's great for them. But it's like, in reality, I know that a lot of these things are smoking mirrors. But however, it was making me insecure about where I was at in life. So, yeah, it made me a lot, you know, protecting myself from certain things. Also from secular things. Also from just things that in real life is not realistic. Um, it's it saved me a lot. It helped me become more positive. Also, with the same thing with music, listening to secular music, and I would notice that I would listen to certain songs, and it'll put me in this like weird trance where whatever the song is about, now I want it. So then I found myself fighting different temptations and different things like that, which was not good with my walk with God. So the source of it, I bring it up because I did grow up in a Caribbean country in Cuba where, you know, satanic stuff is very much predominant and very much active. So I do understand that behind things, there is a spiritual work. There really is. I know that we can pretend like there isn't, but there really is. So we've got to be very cautious 
con um, conscientious about where we're gathering our stuff from, right? What is the source of it? You don't just go to the toilet and drink water from it, right? You look at, okay, where is this water coming from? What is it providing me with, right? And then after that, okay, is this nutritious? Is this clean water, right? Um, so those two questions have played a big, big role in my life. I am filtering everything. Um, I can always bring it back to that. The Bible says, you know, the word of God is a lamp onto our feet. It guides our path. Where should I turn? What should I do, right? As I am, uh, you know, filtering, let's say, music and uh, movies that I may go watch, I love to ask myself two questions. And one is, what is the source of this? Um, and secondly, what is this adding onto my life? What kind of nutrition is it, you know, is it adding the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, goodness, you know, faithfulness, self-control, patient, kindness, all of them, you know. And so if it's not, then I have the right to decide whether that is something that I want to invite into my life or not. Is it adding anxiety? Is it going to add fear? Is it going to increase the, my temptations or loss in my life? And if it is, then why am I going to expose myself to a situation that I have the ability and God has given me the self-control to say no to for the purpose of enhancing all of God's goodness in my life and, and just prevent any more pain from being added onto my life or any more conflict. Being, to be honest, by protecting my ears and eyes, it's allowed me to be more positive. It's allowed me to be more secure in who I am as a woman. It's allowed me, I think what really affected me the most and what I'm really noticing now is that it allowed me to grow and to become who I'm becoming at my own rate. Everyone's time is different. We're all on our own race. I tried, but God, he tried harder. He kept reaching out for me. And then when I did try to reach out to him, when I did read my word, when I did pray, slowly and surely i got to where i got because it just took time there's no exact um range of time like oh three months three days three years everyone's time is different we're all on our own race getting to that point for me was like i it was unhealthy for me so i removed you know secular music i removed certain social media um it was not easy obviously i'm human and i still fall back but how I got to that point was because I knew it wasn't healthy. I, I wasn't reaching my highest potential when I allowed these things in my life. Girl, let me tell you, you hearing things that you shouldn't also may replay inside your mind over and over and over again. So that's like something that it's taken me a long time to work on. And constantly asking God, Lord, please, I probably shouldn't have watched this. I probably shouldn't have heard that. Forgive me of it and wash it from my ears. Wash it from my mind because your mind, it's its very sensitive. And the things that you hear, you have to protect your peace and you have to protect yourself because it's no joke out here. I've gotten to the point of protecting myself when I realized it was just too toxic. Um, also throughout my life, my faith in my faith in Christ and God has just increased through, um, throughout the, my, the years of my life and it's just opened up my awareness of things that aren't good for me. How did I get to this point? Well, I know when my spirit is in need of a full cleanse from any worldly music or any, you know, just worldly images or anything like that because I start to kind of replace feeling certain things and bringing it to Jesus with listening to a certain song or watching videos for comfort. And the problem with that is that's the only thing that those things were giving me was comfort. And I feel like when you're in a gray area in your life, at least for me, um, when I'm in a gray area in my life, I need somebody to speak for me when I can't speak for myself. I need somebody to advocate for me when I can't advocate for myself. I need someone to move for me when I cannot, you know, utter a move for myself. And that's just something that Jesus can only provide. You know, the songs can only say so much. The songs can only touch so much. Um, being that I grew up in a church and my granddad and my dad are pastors, I was kind of always in church. Like gospel music and just hearing that kind of music has kind of always been like the number one thing that I would hear pretty much for my whole life. And even now, train up a child in the way that they should go and I don't know the rest. But train up a child in the way they, that they should go and that's pretty much what happened to me. Um, I like to listen to gospel music because... It does put me in a positive mood. It makes me 
it reaffirms to me that God is able to do everything that he said he will do. Um, he's not a man that he should lie. You know, these are the messages that are given in these songs that I listen to, these gospel songs. So um, I always feel encouraged. I feel, you know, I feel positive. I feel like I know that God is always with me. Um, it, I guess it really didn't take much for me to get to that point. Cause again, like I said, I grew up in a church. My dad's a pastor. My grandpa was a pastor. So yeah, it's like, that's kind of all I know, to be honest. I mean, it's not like my parents didn't give me an option or anything, but it's just something that's in me and it's been in me. So I know it's hard sometimes, especially being a younger person in this world trying to cope with what culture says and what what Jesus says but you know what's right and what's wrong for me how I got to that point of you know really asking God Lord you know like I know telling God like I know there's things that I shouldn't listen to I shouldn't watch I shouldn't even play a part of can you help me to asking God to help me to let go of those things to not like to watch certain shows or certain movies or certain magazines like anything like that just really asking God Lord remove that likingness from me like help me to hate what you hate help me to you know have a a stronger sense of what I shouldn't be watching or listening to and going with what the Holy Spirit leads me to do. Now, I don't always follow it and there's consequences for that. I'm going to be 100% honest with you. But it's reminding yourself that, hey, where has that gotten you? And how has your spirit filled, you know, like felt afterwards? And that to me has helped me a lot. Also remembering like I, the Holy Spirit telling me like, you know, you shouldn't have done that. You know, you should listen to that or you shouldn't have watched that or whatever it is because that guilt comes on and it don't feel good. And then you got to go ask God for forgiveness. So it's a lot of asking God because God says in the book of Matthew, I think it's chapter six, chapter seven. I forgot what verse. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be given to you. There's nothing that you ask God for that he will not do if it's in his will for you. And it's always in his will for us to continue to get better and to grow closer in Christ. So asking God to help my relationship with him to grow has helped me a lot in a lot of things. How did I get to that point? Like I said earlier, God, I was praying to God about my unhappiness and my struggle to feel content in life. And he he made me re like he allowed me to see that, hey, you're creating your own happiness by the way that you're by the things that you're consuming. You got to stop that. So that helped me a lot. And I really needed that to grow by recognizing that I am just human. And I need a savior that I don't believe in God because my parents or my aunties tell me I have to grow into a relationship with God with myself, like, you know, by myself. Um, I have to take responsibility for the God, for the life that has been gifted to me and go to God and, and, and ask for that help. So how I learned that was number one, like I said, by observing there's things that are getting in my life, are taking root into my garden of life, that are not producing good fruit. They're making me more nervous. You know, they, the enemy's using it to tell me that I am not enough. And then so I went to the source of truth. Right now, I'm actually tomorrow, starting tomorrow, August 1st, for um, three weeks, me and my friends are doing a fasting from secular music, secular TV shows, um, and movies, also... Uh, fasting from social media and um, no cursing and also um, practicing abstinence and celibacy during our three weeks. So this is going to be a time where we could really just open our eyes and ears to the word, to God, letting the Holy Spirit guide us in, and being more mindful of what we're consuming I'm currently actually on a fast from um, secular music, so definitely I've been listening to, you know, just straight gospel, contemporary Christian music and things like that. I've been loving Madison Ryan Ward. I love her, love her, love her, but, you know, I've just definitely been filling up myself, you know, when it comes to things like that. Just more of that, um, watching more family friendly you know videos on youtube i'm not gonna lie i i don't 
generally watch anything too gory but you know when you're in a season of fasting and in a season of trying to hear jesus more there's just specific things you can't let um distract you so that's just where i'm at right now i currently feel myself with the word the word of god like i read my word i pray if i don't know exactly what to pray you know you can pray scripture too i I'm in community at my church. I'm part of the dance ministry. Um, I'm in the gym and I just do what I like to do. You know, do the things that are fun, that are good and fun to me. So I fill myself up with the things of Christ first because I want to become a man of God. Once I realized that I want to become a man of God, everything else just fell into place. Instead of listening to Travis Scott, Gunna, all these people, I will listen to Elevation, I will listen to Maverick, I will listen to, you know, all these Christian, you know, um, artists that make more than just gospel, they make Christian R&B, they make Christian rap and Christian workout music, anything, there is a Christian alternative for it and I promise you, you can find it. I've found such a new love for people. I truly see how Jesus loved and that's exactly what I want to replicate. I want to be a little Jesus, which is exactly what being a Christian is. Being a Christian literally means little Christ, to follow Christ and to follow his ways. I encourage every single person to do that. For my ears, I would use gospel music and try and just tune out the negative things in my life, whether it's at work, um, at home, on the road, in the stores, or et cetera. Um, for my eyes, it would be, I would watch educational podcasts, um, going to church and attending Bible study every week. Um, I'm working more and more. I mean, I got to do a better job at it of reading my Bible one and starting my day with it and ending my day with it. Because girl, how you start your day, like I want everybody to know this, how you start your day is so important because how you start your day kind of dictates how the rest of your day is going to go. So if you start your day off on a negative foot, nine times out of 10, the rest of your day will be negative. If you start on a positive note and you are thanking God for what you have, what you don't have, for just even waking up, I'm telling you when other things happen, it won't bother you as much. So um, listening to um, uh, motivational videos, uh, but like audio books as well too, but things that are actually gonna feed my spirit with things that I know um, that God would approve of and self-help things that will help me just become a better person, whether it's in my career, as a mother, as a friend, you know, as a sibling, like self-help books, audio books, things that talk about the mind, um, that talk about you as a person, how you could just better yourself and mainly, um, and, uh, you know, listening to good music, godly music. I know sometimes it's hard because we want to listen to what we want to listening to listen to you. But I ask God, Lord, what you don't like. And I know listening to secular music is not good. I mean, I get I do listen to secular music, but I listen to a lot of gospel music still because I like personally, I like the way church music sound. Um I guess it just really is a place of comfort for me. It's um, it's like, I don't know. I guess it's home for me because that's really what I remember being younger. I remember hearing gospel music, church music all the time. So for me, um, yeah, I feel myself with really gospel music still. And I like old church songs. I like when you're stomping and clapping on the ground like... Literally, I, I never in my life would have ever thought I would be able to go to the gym and literally listen to gospel music and have a good, successful workout. You couldn't pay me two years ago to ever think that that would even be possible. But I do it and I love it. I enjoy it. I listen to gospel music on my way to, to work, from work. When I'm sad, I know I can go in to listen to it. Same thing with like, instead of watching videos like music videos or scary movies, which I love, crime stuff. Like, I love crime. I love stuff like that. So um, instead of think watching those things, I love to watch church sermons. Like, I know I love to watch um, Vlad, Pastor Vlad and Pastor Stephanie Ike or even things from Journey's Church. Like, I'll go back, like, you know, if one of the pastors, like, had a really good sermon, I take notes at church, and then later on, I'll rewatch it again. Of course, I am not going to pretend that 
in every, let's say, romantic <laughs> situation, you're going to play Jesus loves me. You know, like, let's be real. Like, God also loves love. God has nothing against, you know, us singing about the love that he defines as being love and not just lust, you know, pretending to be love. Because uh, often what we're singing about is, you know, songs that is all about the romantic things. But is it a romance based in biblical principles? Like, or is this lust? Or are you coveting somebody else's spouse? Or are you, you know, entering into things that you shouldn't until you're married and now you're singing about them? Um, so, again, it's what I'm listening to, you know, aligning with the truth. Just truth overall. Truth is not just truth because it's God's truth. It's truth because it is truth. So, once if I'm feeling down or I need a boost, I will literally open my bible i may not want to do it at first it is begrudging (laughs) but i still open the bible and once you start getting into it your whole mood will change i know there's an episode that um vedlin had done where it's like just move your body and your feelings will follow you know what i'm saying like you're not always going to want to do the right thing but just taking the initiative to do it is going to benefit your body and your feelings will follow after that. So what I would suggest superstars is just be mindful of what you're consuming, whether it's vision, um, whether it's your hearing, whether it's consuming foods, just be really mindful of what you're allowing people to feed you because at the end of the day, everything is intentional. So are you allowing, you know, am I allowing things into my life that are from the kingdom of light? Uh, where goodness flourishes, or am I allowing into my life things from the kingdom of darkness? Because we got to understand the songs are things that we repeat. We're declaring them over our lives. And so if it's corruption that we're declaring over our lives, what good is that to us? Absolutely nothing. Um, You know, if we're watching a movie, this is time that God has gifted us with. Am I just randomly wasting it? Am I learning something from the movie? Or am I just, you know, wasting my time? God has given us life. It's valuable. And oftentimes, yes, we watch a movie for the sake of, but sometimes movies can become a gateway through which we just allow time to be, you know, passed by. Why? Because we feel like we have no purpose else, right? We have no other purpose or we are under anxiety or depression. And so we just watch over and over again. Um, And it's not so much the the blame to the movie, but the movie can allow us to enter into the mindset where now we're just wasting our time. And I'm not telling you to measure every second of every time. God, sometimes he just wants to show with you. He just wants to show you his creation. Um, And so it's what you're watching. You know, it's what I'm watching, what I'm listening to, a gateway for the Holy Spirit to act in my life. And that's okay if it's romantically, maybe a gateway for the Holy Spirit to teach me certain things that I need to know, right? Um, Or get me in the mood to work. Is it a gateway for the Holy Spirit to enable me, right? And act in my life and and allow all of these good emotions to enter for the purpose of doing his work and being proactive in my life? Or is it just going to be songs that are going to tear me down and put me down emotionally? And now I am worried and concerned and anxious about what the future holds or if my partner is being right, you know, and say partner in terms of like the person that you're dating or your husband, if you are already, you know, married um, or your friend, if they're going to be loyal. Now you're questioning all of this and living in fear or are things that are allowing the spirit of God to be in my life for which, of course, you want to bring, uh, you know, give access to that. So again, if it's something that is allowing the goodness of God into my life, then it's more than welcome. I try to listen to, you know, songs with Christian principles just because it's a safe alternative. But even those, you still got to filter them because, you know, you got to listen to the lyrics, not just the tune. It's what it's saying about God. It's what it's saying about um, who God says I am true. And if it is, then it's welcome. And if it's not and it's making me waste my time, then I'm just wasting valuable. It's not worth, um, you know, the investment of my time in it. If it's just going to leave me with fear, it's just destruction. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you for your word. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Lord, this was such a powerful and educational message. So I thank you for everyone who participated and shared their testimony. 
Thank you for the work that you are doing in each and every one of their lives. That they were able to proclaim your truth. Thank you for their transformation. Lord, thank you so much for their courage and their boldness today. God, I thank you that even though fear played a role in their participation, they overcame that fear with faith and with your strength, God. I pray that the same faith and strength transcends to the listeners today. I thank you for everyone who heard this word. Lord, I pray that something someone said on this episode helps someone in such a specific and unique way. I pray that they begin to become mindful about the things that they led into their floodgates. I pray that they would start to question everything that they consume. Lord, I pray that you would begin to speak to them and convict them when something is not of you. Give them the discernment to know what is true. I pray that you would reveal to them what is not of you so that they would begin to remove it from their lives. Lord, let the light that you give that shines on their feet shine so brightly that they begin to find the path of freedom that leads to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, superstars, that's the end of today's episode. I hope this message left you educated, motivated, and inspired to take your next steps. Always remember, you are alive, you are blessed, you are loved, and you are worthy. You are so worthy. Until next time.